The battery bank of a cruising boat is the heart of its electrical system. But new, and even experienced, cruisers may find the different options for confusing. How do you decide what batteries are best for you? I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share some basic definitions of the different battery types, as well as their pros and cons for cruisers. First, though, do you want to sample the liveaboard lifestyle before committing to it? Captain Suki Cannon at Shambhala Sailing Adventures has the experience for you. Explore the Bahamas paradise while enjoying Captain Suki's easygoing teaching style. Shambhala Sailing. Way more than just a charter. Use the coupon code SAILPARADISE for 10% off your adventure. Check ShambalaSailingAdventures.com to learn more. That link is a little long, but it's in the show notes. Let's go sailing. Okay, let's talk about batteries. The battery bank on a cruising boat is the beating heart of the marine electrical system. While at first glance it may seem to be a simple system, it is perhaps the most complex and misunderstood component. There are many types and chemistries of batteries, different sizes, different intended uses, and confusing and often outright misleading labeling. Battery systems are so confusing that when the time comes to replace batteries, most boat owners choose to just copy exactly what was in the boat before or get whatever an an installer says is the best option. The dual problems here are that the previous boat owner probably just did the same thing or didn't have access to more modern options. And frankly, many installers don't know any more about battery technology than what the distributor's brochure told them. Okay, let's talk about some basic technology. We have to understand a few basic terms. I'm not going to get too technical in the scope of this, but the following need to be understood to really get the most out out of this. Okay, first of all, let's talk about cycle or cycle life. For batteries, a cycle is a discharge followed by a recharge. That's it. For boats using solar as their main source of charging, it's as simple as a cycle is generally 24 hours. Cycle life is the number of times that a battery can be charged and discharged before its total capacity falls below a set amount, generally 80% of the original capacity. Okay, amp hours. An amp hour is a unit to measure the amount of energy used or stored. Batteries are rated in how many amp hours it can hold. There's a lot more to amp hours than we're going to get into here, but just for now, more amp hours equals more capacity. Okay, deep cycle, starting, and dual purpose batteries. Deep cycle batteries are those designed to sustain discharge for long periods of time with thick, heavy plates, but they're limited in the amount of instant power they can supply. That's the opposite of basically a start battery that has more and thinner lead plates and can provide lots of instant power, but will die quickly if discharged for longer periods. Then there are dual purpose batteries. They're kind of a blend of deep cycle and start characteristics. Some types are better at this than others. Okay, the C rate. The C rate is complicated. For simplicity's sake, let's say it's the ratio between capacity, time, and current being drawn. For example, a battery will usually be rated as C20 rate. A 100 amp hour capacity battery rated for C20 will provide 5 amps for 20 hours before being fully discharged. And then depth of discharge. This is how far a battery or a battery bank has been depleted. Most often it's expressed as a percentage, commonly saying that a battery has reached 80% depth of discharge means that the battery only has a remaining capacity of 20%. Okay, so now let's go on to talk about the major types of batteries. There are four primary types of batteries used on boats. First is flooded lead acid batteries, and this is the granddaddy of battery types and still the most commonly used battery type for starting engines and deep cycle applications in boats and RVs. Now the pros. 
They are the cheapest by far for upfront initial investment. Deep cycle banks can be bought for about a dollar per amp hour of capacity. Flooded lead acid batteries are robust and handle cold and hot temperatures pretty well. If they are taken care of properly and discharged no more than 50%, used regularly, good flooded lead acid battery banks can last five to eight years. Okay, the cons. Flooded lead acid batteries need to be fully recharged after discharge to get maximum cycle life. Like their cousins, the AGMs and gels that we'll talk about in a minute, the chemical reactions that store and discharge energy are inefficient combined with necessary long absorption cycles. It takes a lot more energy to fully charge a flooded lead acid battery from 50% depth of discharge to full than it provides going from full down to 50%. Okay, flooded lead acid batteries are heavy as well. A typical 12 volt deep cycle battery can be over 80 pounds. It's not an easy or fun task to yank the old ones out and get the new ones in the often hard to access locations that batteries are in on boats. You have to do maintenance on these also, in addition to make sure that they are not discharged or charged incorrectly. Flooded lead acid batteries require periodic examination and topping off the water and electrolytes. Usually you have to do this once a month. Again, in hard to reach places it can be a real chore, although a battery watering system can make the task much easier. You also have to source distilled water, which can be hard in some locations. Flooded lead acid batteries also have higher rates of self-discharge than other battery types. Self-discharge, basically what that is, is just how much it, it just goes down just sitting there without even any load on it. It's especially a concern with boats used only occasionally or seasonally. A start battery left alone for a few months may not have enough charge to start the boat when you return. Next one is absorbed glass map batteries, also known as AGMs. They were once the advanced battery technology on the market, having features that improve on flooded lead acid batteries. Okay, the number one pro is that they are maintenance free. AGM batteries don't have a liquid electrolyte like flooded batteries that gases off during charging, and so you don't have to add water periodically. On boats where the maintenance tour never ends, one more task eliminated is a good thing. It provides and accepts a charge at higher rates than flooded lead acid batteries, shorter recharge time, and the ability to provide short-term higher current than flooded lead acid makes them a solid choice for smaller banks that sometimes need to run a high load like coffee maker or microwave. It also makes AGMs an excellent choice for dual-purpose batteries, that is, batteries expected to act as both deep cycle batteries and have some engine starter duties. It has a lower rate of self-discharge than flooded lead acid. Flooded batteries, in fact all batteries, lose some of their charge just sitting idle. Okay, and there's better overall service life than flooded lead acid batteries, and they are also less prone to premature failure from occasional deep discharge. And because AGMs use a gel-like suspension rather than a pourable liquid for the acid, they won't spill battery acid and can be installed sideways, making them an option for some of those odd boat layouts we all know and love. Now let's talk about the cons. The cost. AGM batteries cost quite a bit more upfront than flooded lead acid batteries of similar capacity. They also have the highest cost per lifetime amp hour of the major battery types. And they are sensitive to overcharge. Accidentally overcharging AGMs with a voltage over 14.4 can quickly and irreversibly destroy the battery. Next is gel cell batteries. Gel batteries, while an option in a few circumstances, are not often used on boats anymore. The pros. Gel batteries are very similar to AGMs and share most of their advantages over flooded lead acid. And, but the cons, they have lower capacity than flooded lead acid or AGMs for the same amount of space. They cost even more than AGMs, and they do not handle high discharge rates as well as AGMs. 
Okay, now let's talk about the big one, lithium batteries. These are a revolution in deep cycle storage technology. They outperform every other chemistry in every category. First, they are lighter. They are much lighter than any other battery type for the capacity. They have a cycle life far exceeding other battery types. And they have almost 100% efficiency at nearly any charge or discharge rate. No long absorption times, very high current acceptance, meaning they can be charged much faster at higher rates. Much shorter charge times. Other battery types require several hours to recharge the last 20% of their capacity, while lithiums do not. For solar charged batteries, this means that flooded lead acid and AGMs need to be up to 80% with several hours of good daylight left, while a lithium does not. No maintenance. And it's a true dual purpose battery, good for deep discharges like a deep cycle and also for short, intense bursts like a start battery. Minimal self-discharge means that they can be left disconnected for a very long time with no noticeable drop in capacity. And they have exceptionally stable voltage under load. And really, on the con side, there's only one. It's the cost. Now, they're coming down in cost rapidly. I mean, over the last two years, they've come down considerably. Keep watching them if you are interested. We put lithiums on our boat about three years ago. The cost now is about half of what they were then, but the pros so far outweighed the cons, the, or the cost, I should say, that we thought it was well, well worthwhile. Okay, let's talk about battery sizes. They're often known by things like Group 24, GC10, L16. These are all the physical size of the battery, not their capacity in amp hours. When it comes to choosing your battery size, there are a few considerations. Number one is weight. The big batteries, like the 4D batteries, are huge monsters. They weigh over 150 pounds. Getting these in and out of a battery compartment can be a major challenge. In fact, just getting them onto your boat can be a problem. Then there's also the voltage. Most boats run on 12 volt, some 24, 48. Unless you're doing a major overhaul, you really don't want to change your voltage. Batteries are generally sold as 12 volt, and 6 volt batteries can be wired together to act as 12 volts. And when it comes to flooded lead acid batteries, many 12 volt batteries, despite the label, are not true deep cycle batteries. Especially in the larger ones, like the big 4Ds, they really are more of the dual purpose compromise battery. The golf cart batteries that you can find that um, usually they're 6 volt, some that now are 12 volt, they are the best deep cycle option and they are also often the least expensive one at the same time. Now, all batteries in a bank do not have to be exactly the same size. They do need to be the same voltage although it's acceptable to combine 12 volt batteries and six volt batteries that have been wired together to form a 12 volt units. Okay, so let's hit summarize it all. If you can afford the upfront cost and you plan to keep your vote close to 10 years, there is almost no reason not to get good lithium batteries. Um, there's many good brands out there. These are truly game changers. The list of advantages is enormous. More and more people are adopting them. They are no longer a newfangled technology. I really don't know of anybody who's purchased high quality ones and regretted it. If they're in your budget and you're keeping your boat long enough for the initial investment to pay, it, pay for it, just get lithiums. Now, if you can't spend the amount for lithiums, the six volt flooded lead acid batteries, known as golf carts, are usually the best choice. You can build a large, reliable battery bank relatively cheaply, taken care of properly. The, the lifetime cost is comparable to lithiums, but in eight years when your flooded lead acid bank dies, maybe the upfront cost of lithiums will be more palatable. Possibly there's even going to be new technology by that time. Several friends of mine have chosen flooded lead acids simply because of what that 
upfront cost us. Over the lifetime of the batteries, the fact that you're going to need more in a few years, yeah, they're going to end up costing about the same as lithiums, but they do require that big upfront investment. Hope that this has helped, helped you demystify the battery buying process. If you have enjoyed it, please tell your friends about the Boat Galley podcast and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Mm-hmm.